All right, I'm going to start a new series called Giving Back. And I'm going to focus on different aspects and ways you can give back. And this week, we're going to focus on contesting and becoming a contest Elmer. I'd like to start off by first dispelling the myth that you need to be one of those big gun stations like what Jerry and I have here or even bigger like um, my late great friend uh, Paul Bittner, Whiskey Zero AIH. Uh, you don't need to be a super contest station to ha uh, open up your shack and bring in a new ham or maybe someone who's been in the hobby a while but never tried contesting. Now maybe they have very limited HF equipment or no HF equipment at all or maybe they have a nice station but never contested before. So feel free to open up your shack no matter how small. Try having a new ham come in and uh, contest with you. Now N0AX Ward Silver, he opens his shack up and he teaches people how to contest and they get hooked into the aspect of contesting and become even more involved in the hobby. Our friend N9TK Jim Warner, he opens up his shack for special event stations and he does it for field day each year so it doesn't have to be anything spectacular. They have nice stations but it's not you know top of the line. And who's this guy? Anybody know who that is? I'll give you a hint. His name's Bu Frohart. And if you still can't figure it out, his first name is Elmer. Now he was the real inspiration to come up with the name Elmer. Now Bud, or Elmer, he was very active in RAMS, which is the Radio Amateur Megacycle Society in Illinois. And uh, Bud, or Elmer, was always helping newcomers to the hobby. So Rod Newkirk, who is a friend of uh, Elmer, uh, used the name Elmer in his March 1971 House DX column in QST, when referring to somebody who helped mentor. A little bit of trivia for you there. Unfortunately, Bud became a silent key in 2016. So again, you can be a little pistol station and have uh, new hams come in and learn how to contest. And just remember, success comes in all sizes. Perfection is not required and uh, Jim Warner I didn't put that under your name for any reason. It just happened to fall that way, just so, so you know. And you never know. You could have a real impact on someone's life by opening up your doors uh, and teaching them contesting. And hopefully they fall in love with it as much as you do. So why should you be an Elmer? Well, most likely if you're a contester, somebody did it for you. They opened up their doors. You came in, learned all about it. So it's now your chance to give back and do it for somebody else. Pay it forward. Plus, they say, any teacher will tell you, if you want to learn or perfect something, teach it. And you may just end up making a friend for life in the, in the process. And down the road, as you start to better your station and make it more competitive, uh, they might come in and help you get that all set up and uh, get new antennas up or whatever needs doing. Now, we're all aging here. And some of those contests are pretty hard to keep up with, especially the 48-hour ones. So if you open up your shack, they're going to help us uh, split that out so you can take a nap while they work and vice versa. So it makes it a lot easier if you have some help, when, with, especially with the really long contest. And last, you might be getting a little bored or lost a little excitement in the contesting thing because you've been doing it for so long. Well, bringing someone new in is going to help spark and rekindle your interest in contesting. So you decided to bring an Elmer in or two. So where do you start? First of all, pick a smaller, easier contest. Don't start out with one of the big ones or a sweepstakes with the hard exchanges. Uh, pick something easy. Uh, and I'll go into a little bit of that later. Offer maybe one or two hams at your next club meeting the opportunity to come do that. You want to try and keep like a one-to-one -one Elmer to new op ratio, ratio if you can, maybe a one-to-two. Um, so keep it small. Don't bring in the whole club. Uh, for a big open house. And you have the choice of whether to choose multi-single or multi-two. Multi-two is easier from the standpoint that you don't have to worry about band change violations. But if you think that they can handle that, I would go for the multi-single. It'll just make you a little more, uh, place a little higher in the ranks uh, competitively. But you're not in it to win it, you're in it to teach it. So keep that in mind. Now you're going to have to do a little bit to prepare, not too much more than what you normally would do, but the first rule, make sure you label everything, because if your ham shack is like our ham shack, there's at least one or two labels in here that don't pertain, you know, it might say it's a 20 meter stack when it's really for 40 meters or something, so label it all, 
And then you're going to want to provide them a little cheat sheet because it's their first time. And I'll go over kind of what things to put on a cheat sheet in a little bit too. Um, but make sure all your software is updated and all your equipment is worth working. You Nothing worse than having somebody come into contest and your station's not working and you're having some issues. So nothing turns them off more than that. Have them arrive early so they can go over a dry run, give them a tour of what antennas and how to do this and that, and go over the rules, especially if there's band change violations and things like that. And then beforehand, you're going to want to get a couple Elmer trainee accessories, which I'll go over in a little bit as well. So the contest begins. So first off, you all want to have the mindset that you're there to teach and not win, just yet anyway. Maybe the second and third time you guys start working on being more competitive. Make sure you keep their operating shift short and frequent so they can get as much operating time as they want but they don't you don't want to overwhelm them so one hour sessions work really nice especially when they're starting off and you're gonna to want to sit with them at first and uh, make sure you're a little one-on-one -on -one and encourage them to ask questions and always keep a pen and a notepad right next to the logging software even when you're not Elmering when you're contesting anytime always keep a notepad handy because you are gonna need it now make sure after the contest you appreciate their successes no matter how small. Maybe they were able to work 10 guys in a row on search and pounds on the first try. Little things like that even um, help them out. Have a little one-on-one -on -one review and, and talk about what they can work on for next time and what they did really good and make sure you, it's very encouraging. Um, it's cool to keep some stats on how they did. They love to see their stats, how fast their rate was, things like that, what states or countries they worked. They love that stuff. And always give them a certificate or a thank you note or something to show that you appreciate that they came out that day. And uh, should you win any awards, when we have guest stops, whenever I win any of these plaques you see on the wall behind me, I we order and pay extra so that all the guest stops get plaques as well so that's always a nice touch to do some people do shirts too cool contesting shirts or something like that that's always fun too and here's a list of some ideal contests that will work when you're getting new contesters into your shack state cuso parties work great especially the larger ones like california and florida california they give out wine if you do well how, how cool is that uh, or those multi-state cuso parties like the new england or the 7qp cuso parties north american cuso party june vhf cq worldwide vhf arrl 10 meters something where you give your name in your state or your name in your grid those are super easy and still can be a lot of fun you don't need to be made of money to get some Elmer accessories. Um, that first one's $21, most expensive thing on this page right here, and that allows you up to, ha to have up to four headphones splitting off uh, a signal, and you each have your own volume control. You don't want to be at high volume or you just listen to them in the background. Those That would be kind of nice. You can get the simple splitter for $4.99. You're at the same volume your uh, new guys at and then you get the VGA splitter I highly recommend this um, so you can have two monitors using the N1MM or whatever logging software you use so uh, maybe you're gonna help them log so if you're both listening and you can log while he's doing it and he can see what you're doing or if you need to fix a mistake on the fly you can do that with that uh, VGA monitoring monitor splitter we have one and we use it a lot and last but not least uh, make a cheat sheet for them uh, one thing we do right on the monitor, right in front of them, we put the call sign and the exchange right there for everybody to see because they're so used to giving their call sign out um, and not your call sign. Uh, so that has to be real front and center for them so they don't accidentally give out the wrong call sign. Um, but you want to also do, if it's, you know, whatever the exchange is, maybe you're doing a state CUSA party, you want to have a list of all the counties there so it's easy for him to see what the abbreviations are or a grid square map or whatever the thing that pertains to whatever your exchange is uh, in particular for that contest. Also, it's good to have the quick band change rules there. They have a 10 minute rule or eight band changes an hour or whatever it is. And then you want to have a band change checklist so you don't want them destroying your equipment. So if he's going to go from 20 to 40, have a little quick checklist on everything he needs to do and the order he needs to do it to make sure he doesn't uh, wreck your equipment. Uh, also a good idea to have a frequency privilege uh, limit list for each band, you know, you can't transmit below here on this freak, this band and above that, you know, so um, because this is first time for some of them on HF. All right, I'm going to leave you with a quote from the one man I would leave Jerry for if he were alive today. I think he's the best, Nikola Tesla. 
My brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. I think he's talking about Elmer's.